And now, another timely and powerful message from Pastor Emmanuel Williams and Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee. Since we live in interesting times, amen? Interesting times. You've got to decide to serve God in these days, amen? You have to make a decision to serve the Lord, amen? You have to make a decision to do what? Serve the Lord, because of the pressure that's against doing things for the Lord. Well, let me say it again. Because of the pressure that comes against us by the enemy. And it's subtle. You got to be aware of it. But it's very subtle. Everything the enemy tries to bring in our way is to distract us from giving God our all. Amen. That's what he's trying to do. All he's, He has one goal. And that is to distract us. To devour those who are gullible. Amen. This morning though I want to bring to close the two part sermon series I began last week Sunday. Our text was taken from the book of Haggai chapter 1. If you remembered we left off discussing verse 5 where the prophet Haggai told the people. The Lord said to consider your ways. You remembered. Think very carefully about the choices you are making. And we said we have four more months before 2023 ends. And the Lord would have us be very careful. Amen. Think critically. Uh huh. Very carefully about the choices you are making for the last four months of this year. You see, since the nation of Israel was held captive, as we said last week, captive. For 70 years in Babylon because of their disobedience. Uh huh. And the time had come for them to be released according to the word of the Lord. God's word never returns void. Amen. God prophesied that they were going to be taken in cap into captivity for 70 years. They were taken into captivity for seven, 70 years. God said after that they would be released. They were released after 70 years. Because the Bible says his word, Isaiah 55, 11 says his word never returns void. When thus saved, when thus saved the Lord, whatever he says comes to pass. And so the time had come for them to return to Babylon. And according to God's word and upon their release, King Cyrus of Persia, Amen. Returned to them all the temple furnishings King Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. The, he gave them a head start. You remember we said that last week. You know, interestingly, somebody said to me, Pastor, you spoke about Nebuchadnezzar. You spoke about Cyrus. Which is it? <laughs> Good question. Amen. Good question. Let me give you a text before I explain. To confirm that. God did give the Israelites all the furnishings, the gold and the silver they needed, amen, to build the temple. Can you go to Ezra chapter 5 verse 14 to 15? Let's read that before I explain what's happening with the names Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus. You got Ezra chapter 5 verse 14 and 15. This is Cyrus, King Cyrus speaking. He said, the vessels also of gold and silver... Of the house of God which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem. And brought them into the temple in Babylon. Those did Cyrus the king take out of the temple of Babylon. And they were delivered unto one whose name was Sheshbaster. I know it's easy but that's how it's pronounced. Sheshbaster. Whom he made governor. Sheshbaster is the... I think I have a, I think I may have a, an exhibit on that, I think. Ezra chapter 5. I think that's the first exhibit. Shez Bashtah here is Zerubbabel. It's a Persian name for Zerubbabel. You remembered, whenever the heathen, the Babylonians or the Persians, whenever they relocated anybody to their kingdom, they renamed them. They named Daniel Beltisaja. They named Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remembered? Uh-huh. Amen. So, the Bible says, this is the text I just read. 
Notice we have Nebuchadnezzar, and then we have Cyrus in the same text, and Shezbazer, who was Zerubbabel's Persian name. Remember, Zerubbabel was the governor, the one who was in charge, and his priest, he had a priest called Joshua, not Moses, it's Joshua. And God raised the prophets. He raised Malachi, Haggai, and Zechariah. You remember we said that last week. To minister to the people. Praise the Lord. And so here the Bible says God gave them a head start. He said, go back and build the temple. Go back and build my house. And you're not going empty handed. He gave them a head start. All the furnishings of the temple. Now, let me answer the question. Amen. Amen. Can you bring up our next exhibit, the statue? And I'll explain why somebody, somebody said, Pastor, which is it? Uh, 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 you said Nebuchadnezzar, you said um, Cyrus. What's happening? Well, this is what happened. In a dream, God revealed nearly 1,000 years of history to King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. The dream God gave him is recorded in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. And the dream God gave him was about the five superpowers of the world that were to come. In one night, God gave a heaven a thousand years of history. Wow. And it's all recorded for us in Daniel chapter 2. God told him the head of the image, it's the head of gold. The first world superpower was the Babylonians. The Babylonians, their king was King Nebuchadnezzar. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar was the king who took Israel into captivity. And when he took them, he took everything, all the Venetians in the temple. After King Nebuchadnezzar, there arose another world superpower. Persia, the Persians, that's the image with the silver, chest and arms of silver, Medo-Persia. And when Medo-Persia came into power, they took over Babylon. So that is why you have Cyrus, who was the king of Persia, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, named in the same passage. Are you with me? So, so Nebuchadnezzar took them into captivity. Cyrus, who was king of Persia, took over Babylon. And when he came, he saw the gold and silver, which Nebuchadnezzar took. And so he released the Israelites to go back to Jerusalem. And he said, look what Nebuchadnezzar take. Take it with you. I don't need it. I have much more. Amen. Can you say thank God? A thousand years of history. Since in hindsight, we can see that prophecy is history to God. Let me say it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, glory be. You know, prophecy is history to God because God lives beyond time. God lives in the heavens. In the heavens, there is no time. There is no morning. There is no evening. It's just light. Just light. And there is nothing as this morning to God or this afternoon. That's why the Bible says one day. Is like what? A thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day to the Lord. And so God gave a heaven. And he said the next superpower was Greece. That's the, the belly of bronze. You remember Alexander the Great. Amen. From Greece. And the next superpower was Rome. And so on and so forth. So God gave a heaven. A thousand years of history. In one dream. Wow. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing. And since, and since, so that is why you see, that was a very good question, by the way. <laughs> That's why you have Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus in the same passage. Amen. God raised up Cyrus and Cyrus called himself, though even he called himself the servant of God. <laughs> wow. Only God can do that. Amen. How many of you are happy you serve a powerful God? Mm, a wonderful God. Glory be to Jesus. And so in, in, in Haggai, where we stopped last week, verse 5, um, uh, God told the people, amen, after they were released, they went back to, to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. They faced opposition and they stopped building the temple. They built the foundation 
Amen. And they stopped. Now think about it. They built the foundation. Where were the temple furnishings? The gold and the silver that they gave them. Well, they were in a storage, right? No, they were in their homes. Took God's things. Put them in their homes. Well, let me, let me move on here. Amen. Just the foundation. And so, for us, brothers and sisters, as I said, we have to be careful. Amen. The reason why they stopped building is because they were discouraged and they went to build their own homes. Amen. Let's read from the Bible before you say, Pastor is not giving us the scripture. Haggai chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse 2 and we'll get to verse 6. Amen. So the Lord spoke to Haggai because God is looking. What is he doing? He's everywhere at the same time. The Bible says he's omnipresent. So he's looking and he looked at them. They built the, the, um, the foundation. 16 years pass and nothing else is happening. And God is saying nothing. Praise God. Because God is giving us the opportunity to correct our wrongs. It's called course, course correct. <laughs> Amen. We are on a course and sometimes we deviate. So we have to do some course correction. And so God is saying, watching, saying, will somebody please do some course correction? Nobody's doing anything. So God said, okay, I'm going to have to honor my words. And I'm, I'm making, I want you to understand what I mean when God said he has to honor his words. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 onwards, God warned the people what would happen to them if they fail. Can you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Let's say what God told these people. God said, if you disobey what I told you to do, it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, all these curses shall fall upon you and overtake you. Now listen carefully. You can go back in the book of um, Deuteronomy 28, and you'll see all what God says would happen to these people if they disobey his word. Now, I will tell you, brothers and sisters, according to, oh, the text just let me. According to, uh, it says that we're no longer cursed. Amen. Yeah, it says, it says, uh, cursed is everyone who hangeth on a tree. Is it, what, what scripture it is? But God, but Christ has delivered us from the curse of the law. Amen. Is it, uh, anyhow, uh, the text slipped me. But we'll get it. It's coming up somewhere. Amen. But, but, but since this is what I'm saying. God says to them, if you do not listen to what I'm telling you. And sometimes, saints, we have to sit back and listen. Because I was told, I heard somewhere that the generation who forgets history will repeat history. Amen. Now we have a set of people. We have history given to us. And I'm saying let's not repeat the history. And keep talking about God is love. And God is good. And let's have faith. Let us settle down and realize that we have a responsibility to obey God. Amen. To follow through with God. Are you with me saints? And not fool ourselves. L when I began really getting into the word of God, um, when I did get happy in church, it was meaningful. I understood. And I wasn't getting happy because I see the brother happy. I see the sister happy. I got to be happy. No. And then go live my life anyway. The Bible began to dictate my life. I began to understand who I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. God. The most high El Elyon, possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. I think many of us don't realize we haven't, it hasn't sunk into our hearts. Thank you. Galatians 3.13. It says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. We just read in Deuteronomy 28. God said he would curse the people. Amen. So therefore we are no longer cursed. And I'll explain that. Because Christ hath redeemed us from what? Curse of the law. Being made what? For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Can you go to verse 14 quickly? I didn't mean to get in. Verse 14 is, is what brings it home. That is why, here is why Christ became a curse for us. And we are no longer cursed. That the blessing of Abraham. 
might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What a blessing. Now while we are no longer under a curse, God has a responsibility to keep his word. I want you to keep that in mind. He has Psalms 138 verse 2 says God has magnified his word above all his names. So God has, they are disobeying. God has to honor his word. God said, if you disobey, this is what's going to happen. If God says, this is what's going to happen and it doesn't happen, his word is not his bond. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, these are the things I begin to understand as I begin to immerse myself in Bible reading. I begin to ask God, where am I going wrong? What is going on? Yes, I go to church and I get so happy. And I came home. I came, I'm so empty when I'm, when I'm back at the house. What's going on? But I had to make that connection. That's why when we sing this morning, his life is flowing through my veins. The 45 minutes, an hour we spend here, brothers and sisters, not too much life can flow through your vein in here. <laughs> well, I don't mean. You got to come in here with life. Flowing through your veins. After you've spent some time at the house. Immersing yourself. In pursuit of God. Isn't that a blessing? Mm, on Saturday morning. To know you have nothing to do on Saturday. And you plan to spend about 3-4 hours. Reading the word of God. And you, pull, you, go to, you go get a walk first. To get your mind ready. Mm -hmm, then you pull over. On the back porch with a cup of coffee. Or tea. Whichever. Tea. Or it could be water, get a red. And you begin to immerse yourself in Bible reading. This is so refreshing. Two hours into it, you don't want to leave. The thought of living begins to frustrate you. <laughs> Just I got I gotta leave this right here and do what? Anyhow. I'm not sure why I got there, but I know how to get back. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider what we are doing. Amen. Let us not repeat the history that is recorded here for us. Because God is no respect of persons. Amen. He is no what? Respect of persons. So the people begin. They forsook God's temple. Let's read the text. Hey God, you got Haggai chapter 1? Let's read from verse 2 quickly. I'll, I'm still... It says, thus saith the Lord of hosts, say, say to these people, God is telling Haggai to tell the people, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet saying, is it time for you, O you Jerusalemites, well that's not there, I just put them there, to dwell in your sealed houses. Sealed means panel houses. And this house, my house lying west in ruin, now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Amen. God said you've ignored the building of my house. And you're building your own house. Consider your ways. Amen. And the problem here is a tragedy to put God first. Let me say that again. There, uh, well that's what this sermon is entitled. Sorry. This sermon is entitled the tragedy of not putting God first. It's what? Yeah, yeah. You'll experience that. I will experience, we will experience that if you don't put God first in everything. I think it's Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 says, in all your ways. Proverbs 3 6. And he shall what? Direct your path. In all your ways. All. A-L-L. -L, all your ways. Acknowledge the Lord and he shall direct your path. Ask God. Is it your word? Is it you? Mm-hmm. Are you involved in this right here? Because it doesn't matter how good it looks. Mm -hmm. You want God in it. Let me say that. You want God in it. Hallelujah. I told my wife, my wife and I were speaking last week. And she said to me. She said to me. <laughs> she looked at me and we were just talking. And she said, you, you go nowhere. <laughs> I said, you know, I have made so many mistakes in my life. I cannot, I don't have the time to make any more mistakes. 
I don't have time to cost correct. Don't have, it's costly. I just don't have the time for that. And so because of that, I'm very careful, very precautious. Amen? I get, a little, I, get a small, I get a little oxygen and a little bread and cheese. I'm all right. And a cup of water. Is that okay? But I, I got to leave out my purpose. I'm in pursuit of why I'm here. Hallelujah. And so we have to what? consider our ways. Matthew chapter 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And he's what? Yes, yes. Righteousness, his way of doing things. And all these things shall be added to you. The things, he, all these things are the things he mentioned above. And the things he was talking about is house and land and, and clothing and money and food. He said all these things will be added to you if you seek first. If you put God first. We should not repeat what these people did. They did not put God first. And we're going to see what happened to them in a while. I'm going to read through it expeditiously. Amen. And somebody asked me last week. Uh, uh, um, they, uh, they reminded me. They said, Pastor, you said you'd show us how to keep the devil away from us. From our, from our house. From our, from our family. From our money. And I'm, I'll show that to you in a while. Amen. But, 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 but let's go through the word of God. Because this, there is history here we cannot ignore. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, we are told to seek first, make seeking God a priority. Make putting God first a priority. All these things will be added to, to you and I. Amen? Let me reiterate what I said earlier on. It's often said a generation is likely to, is likely to repeat its history if they are not aware of that history. Amen? I'll be saying it throughout. Because I'm discussing history with you now. I do not want us to repeat the his, that history. Amen. The history of Christians who neglected God. Neglected to put God first. And the result was fruitlessness and frustration. So the people are speaking. They are frustrated. And you say frustrated. And God is listening to them. And now he's telling hey guy, This is what I hear them say. In verse 6. He told them here is why. Amen. What you are frustrated about is happening to you. He began to tell them. He said, you have so much and bring in little. Mm -hmm. You eat, but you have not enough. And you know, I, I, because I'm just revising, I cannot get into, into this right there. can take a, take a five, six, seven Sundays easy. Because if you be, this, there's history behind that. What was happening is these people, they were planting and worms were eating the fruit. Because God told them that would happen to them. God, you see, Haggai is not telling us why they were planting much and getting little. But if you go back, God had warned and said, if you forget me, if you do not do what I told you to do. And sometimes this, uh, how many of you would agree that these sermons are healthy? You know, we need to know the truth. We live in very difficult times since. Amen. You can, you can feel that the falling away has begun. Can you say that again? The falling away has begun. It's like everything you have to do for God now, you got to put effort. And I love it. Let me tell you why. Because you have to will to do it. These are not times where you fake serving God. No, 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 no. You got to push your way through. Yes, yeah. yeah. You got to talk to situations, talk to your body. I got up this morning, I said, hey, 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 I know we are tired, but we are going anyhow. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I did some stretches, some exercises, glory be to God. Drink my two cups of water, amen. You, you got to will to push, you got to will to come. Because of the times you are living in. Oh, glory be to Jesus. He said, you drink, but you are not filled. You clothe, but there is none warm. He said, he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. You earn a salary, but the money runs out quickly as if holes were in your pocket. I 
I love verse 7 and verse 8. Verse 7 said, consider your ways. The Lord of hosts is speaking. And God said, I'm going to give you a second chance. I'm going to reiterate what I told you. Can you go to verse 8? Verse 8, he's reiterating. He said, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will what? Take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, save the Lord. That's what God has been telling them for the last 17, 16 years. Take care of my house. Do what you've got to do. You know, my wife and I were speaking and we said, when God bless us, walk into this building, it will take your breath. Yeah. Just walk into the house of God. Just from looking at the curb appeal, a smile will break on your face. Taking care of God's house. The Bible says David had zeal for the house of God. Jesus said, zeal for the house of God has consumed me. I'm asking you, is zeal for God's house consuming you? Are you so preoccupied with the way the Lord's house looks? Are you preoccupied to ensure that the Bible says there is meat in God's house? Meat here means enough resources to take care of the house of God so God's house can continue. Jesus, that's what the Bible said. Jesus had zeal for the house of God. He came in and he took, he took a whip. <laughs> there, only once or twice he lost his school. That was one time. He, didn't, he never lost his school. But once or twice he lost his school for the way God's house looked. He said, you've turned the Lord's house into a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. Oh God, we give you praise. Go to the mountain and do what I told you to do. Amen. I was reading one commentator. He said, their money was devoured by unforeseen expenses. It was protected. It, it, was, it was not protected, hedged from the devourer. That's what he said. L listen, listen to what? L listen to verse, um, verse 9. Verse 9 says, You looked for much, and lo, it came into little. And when you brought it home, I did what? Yeah. The commentator said it was just unforeseen expenses. Just stuff just started happening. Don't you think that's important to know? Now I'm going to show you what it means when God say I blow upon it. Because, because um, it, it's amazing. I'm going to show you somebody in the Bible whose household and everything was protected. The Bible says it was hedged. His children, his substance, his cattle, there was a hedge around it. And the devil came looking around and wanting to launch an investigation. The devil came launching an, an investigation to see what's going on. How, how is it this man's house is hedged? I cannot touch it and I can go down the road and destroy somebody else. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. How is it that his crops and his animals, they are just multiplying? I just can't touch it. How many of you think that's, how many of you think that's important? You know, you know what we do? We bury our head in the sands like an ostrich. When the sermons come and we still go, look, and we still go, go out and do the very same thing. You cannot bury your head in the sand. As an ostrich. Are you with me? This is for real. There is a real devil out there. There is a real God who has given us laws. And assurances of his goodness. He's given us assurances. Our only problem is we don't trust in the Lord. With our heart. We do so with our head. Well. I'm talking to me. I shouldn't talk out so loud. Amen. So loud. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So he said here, he said, uh, 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 in verse, God said, I blew on it. Why? Save the Lord of hosts. Because of mine house. He, he said what? He said, the reason why I blew on it is because of mine house. That is in waste. It's in ruins. You leave it, you, for, you forsake it, you forget it, and you run every man unto his own house. You run to build your house. My house is sitting there. Amen. In ruin. And I warned you, I told you back then, if you do not obey me, this is what's going to happen. 
This is a recipe for frustration. Honestly, disobeying God and doing your own thing is a recipe for frustration. And God said in, God said in verse 10, can you go to verse 10 quickly? God said, because therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew. I stopped the dew. And the earth is stayed from her fruit because there is no dew, no rain. There is no lot of rain to bring a bumper crop. Amen. Can you, can you, can you continue? God said, not only that, but I call for a drought. 10 and, 10 and 11 is the same thing. It's called economic catastrophe. That's what it is. God said, look, I, I'm, bring, I'm bringing down the hammer. <laughs> yeah. Because my house, I'm concerned. And can, can I be honest with you? D does God need a house to live in? Is this the heavens cannot even contain God. God doesn't need a house. You know what God is after? Blessing his people. Because if you obey him, he'll bless you. He's after seeing his people prosper. And he's hurting his heart. I have to honor my word. And I want to see my people bless. So I'm going to force them to do the right thing. Because God doesn't need a house. What do you think? <laughs> well, let me move on. Let, let me read. And I call for a drought upon the land and upon, see where he called a drought for, upon the land, on the mountains, and the corn, and the new wine, and the oil, and upon the ground which bringeth forth, and upon men. Guys, they, they were just dying off because of sickness and disease. And upon all the labor of the hands. God said, I'm bringing a drought. You won't obey me? I'm going to show you what disobedience brings. Since, you know, um, there is something going on, a talk going on. Well, this is Old Testament and this is New Testament. Let me share this with you. Old Testament, New Testament is God's word. God has to honor his word. Are you getting me? Don't get involved in these, what I call theatrics or tricks. God's word never, Mark 13, 31. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. And you are here listening today because God wants to reach you and I to ensure that he blesses us. Mm -hmm. To ensure he does what? That's what God is after. He wants to bless his people. And he's telling us today, do not repeat that error. Do not repeat the error. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 says, For we are laborers together. We are what? Laborers together. God said you are his husbandry. First Corinthians 3 9. You are God's building. So this is what God is saying. We are partners in what's going to happen on earth. You do something and then I do my part we, to honor what you did and then you'll see the results. What the Bible says, we are what? Laborers together. So the, God is saying, if you do something, you know I said over and over and over again, we live in two dimensions here, two atmospheres, two Amen. Two worlds simultaneously. Amen. And it's what you do here that's going to affect what happens in the spirit realm. So as you move here in faith, heavens accompany you. Let me say that again. As you move here in faith, heaven accompany you. Don't walk around thinking you just, you're just going to get accompaniment. Yes, you'll get salvation. Let me, you and I, as soon as we open our mouth, God, Jesus, we got saved. But after you get saved... You got to possess the land. You got to do what? You possess the land through obedience and through prayer. Didn't God tell the Israelites to go in and possess the land? They were in the promised land. They were there already. And God said, now you're in. Go possess it. When you become a Christian, you got salvation. You asked Jesus Christ to enter into my heart. Blasey, blasey. Yes, you did. After that, the work begins. Through prayer, you possess the land. 
Through obedience, you possess the land. That's why the devil doesn't want you and I to pray. Because no prayer, no possession. You'll feel dry. Spiritually feeble. I just don't feel like well because you're not possessing. Not possessing. In Bible, in immersing yourself in Bible study and praying, you're not possessing. You know what I, I, I surveyed quite a few Christians, saints, and you know it's not that we don't want to pray, you know that? It's not, you, the point is, would you say Christians don't want to pray? No, no. It's how to pray. It's what to say. That's the problem. I had to take somebody's hands. I'm talking about a mature Christian. Take their hands and walk them through the word of God and show them how to pray. That person's life changed. So I found out it's not that we don't want to pray. No, 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 no. It's how and what to say to get engaged. So you can feel his life is flowing through my vein. <laughs> so you can feel his life pulsating through your veins. Hmm? Well, or not. <laughs> I told you there was a guy in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There was a guy in the Bible whom the devil launched, a, launched an investigation upon. Can you go to Job? Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 verse uh, maybe 5 or 6. <laughs> let's start from there. Uh, let's do 6. Let's do 6. Now there came a day, um, let's do eight, sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I just want, I want to, yeah. And the Lord said unto Satan, so listen, listen, listen. This is what happened. In verse one, we are told that the Bible said Job was a, a righteous man. He feared God and he eschew. Eschew is, evil. eschew means to turn someone off. Evil turned Job off. Amen. And the Bible says he he kept all the sacrifice. He kept the sacrificial law. Every sacrifice in the Bible, God said to, to make, Job did it. That's why he was called an upright man. So because of that, Satan saw him prospering. And Satan began to visit the man's house. He went on his farm. He went on his, his farm, looked at his animals. And, and Satan drew a conclusion. So Satan is going around looking at Job's business. And God confronted him. And God told him, are you considering, the word consider is to think. Are you thinking of doing Job evil? Now I know you've heard that God called the Satan and, and start to boast and say, have you? No, that's, that's not the text. God said to the devil, I am calling your bluff. I see what you are up to. You are no good. The devil, God called him out. God wasn't boasting on Job. I know what you've heard. <laughs> So God told him, have you considered my servant? And listen to what, uh, uh, oh right here, that's it right here. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fear of God and eschew evil? Uh -huh. can, can, can you go to verse, listen to what the devil is saying. Satan answered and said unto him, does Job respect you reverently for nothing? No, no, Job doesn't know that. Job doesn't know God and the devil, they're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Job didn't even know necessarily that there was a hedge around him. You and I have, now you and I have the, oh, I'm looking for a word, the opportunity or the privilege, yeah, of seeing that now. Amen. Then Satan said unto God, can you go to verse 10? Listen, listen, listen. Has thou made him, listen, listen to what the devil is telling God. The devil launched an investigation and this is what he said. Hast thou not made him an hedge about him, an hedge about his house, an hedge above all that, on, on what? On every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. He told him, you've hedged him, you've hedged him, you've hedged him. How many of you know every believer is hedged? Some of you don't sound convinced, but that's okay, that's all right. That's, all right. That, that's okay. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay these are the days we live in amen <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you can, yes, that was back then, 15,000 years ago. Now, yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> the pressure from hell. <laughs> so, so that's what I meant. The reason why God prospered Job is because Job was obedient. Job honored the Lord with his substance. Mm -hmm. Job obeyed God. The people disobeyed God and God told them, I blew. <sighs> now, now listen to what blow means. This is what it means. Can you go to verse? Because I want to show you since it is not God who's necessarily bringing the drought and the evil. I'm going to show you. Can you go? But God does something that allows the drought and the evil to come in. Can you go to verse 11? Listen to what Satan told, told God. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had. In other words, take the hedge off. That's what it means. Now, when God is taking off the hedge, the devil is going to come in. He's the devourer. Mm? Well, that's what First Peter 5 it tells us. The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. And so the devil said, what you got to do is take out the hedge. And I tell you, when I squeeze him, he'll curse you to your face. And God said, okay, I'm going to take the hedge off. When I prayed that prayer, I said, God, don't you ever have that conversation about me. <laughs> I said, God, I'm not in the land of Nord, okay? I'm, I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. I, I honestly, dog, I tell God that every time. I said, there's another guy down, down the road who may want that, but <laughs> not me. Not in 2023. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know at the end of what I said? I'm sitting in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Because God will give me the strength. <laughs> but in me. Uh-uh. So he said to God, poof off. And that's what it means to blow. When God said I blow on your resources in Haggai. He means I took off the hedge. And the devil who is a destroyer, he came to, he came to what? Steal, kill, destroy. That's, that, that's it. Listen, saints. And so that, and God is so, God has so much integrity. I forget to bring the verse, the verse in the Bible uh, to share with you where God said, God said, I made evil. Because he made the devil and the devil perpetuates evil. And so God said, because I made that, I created the devil. I'm taking responsibility. I said, that is strong. You got to be strong to take that responsibility. You got to know who you are. You got to be stronger than horseradish. I'm just joking. But, <laughs> but you got to be strong to say, I made evil. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to stay away from evil. But God said, I made the evil one. So I'm taking responsibility. Man, when I saw that, I said, God, what integrity. He did not make an excuse. I'm going to bring that verse for you. I was so, man, you know, things, these are the things that caused me to fall in love with God. He's so honest. Mm -hmm. And so listen to what happened. Notice what happened. Can you go to, oh yeah, you got it. Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Because he made the devil. And he's taking responsibility. God is good. That verse just, I just, if he was the man, I would run on him and just kiss him. God, you, you, you are that, you have that in. Anyhow, let's go back to Job. Thank you so much. And, and let's see what happened when the devil, and I'm going to, and, and I have five more minutes. Let's see what happened when God touched it. Touch means to, to go and remove. Uh -huh. Let's see what God did in Job chapter one. I think it's verse one, verse seven or eight. Let's see what happened when God, uh-huh, you know, I think when verse 11, but put, put forth thine hand, the devil is talking to God, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse you to your face. Can you go to verse um, 12? And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So that Satan, so Satan went from the Lord's presence and see what happened. See what happened? God reached forth and he took off the hedge. And there was a day when his sons, 
and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Uh huh. Verse 14. Notice what happened. The devil is coming in. God took off the hedge. And there came a messenger from Job and said, Thy oxen were plowing and the asses feeding besides them. Let me ask you, were the, act, were the oxen plowing and the, and the asses feeding besides them? Was that happening all the time? Yes. Was, that, was there any tragedy happening to Job before that? No. He was protected. Notice. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell you. God just took off the hedge. Mm -hmm. Notice, can, can, can you, let's move on quick, let's move on. Verse 16. When, while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I am only to escape to tell you. He said, The fire of God. Uh huh. And you know, I, I, sometimes you got to sit back and and process these things. Will God do that? No. I can show you that's not God. Amen. I can show you the Bible says in Revelation. The false prophet will be causing fire to come from heaven. Amen. So God has removed. Amen. So, so we got to we, we gotta use our brain when we use the Old Testament. When we read. Because we got to understand who God is. Amen. And how he works. Who he is in his nature. Amen. Uh huh. And it says here. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon your camels and have carried them away, yeah, and slain the servants at the edge of the sword. And I'm only left to tell you. One after the other, the devil came at Job. And that's what he wants to do us, devour us. Now listen, saints. I, I, I want to show you this right here. This is showing what happens when you and I Come out from under the blessing of God. Let me, are you with me, saints? I'm telling you, that's what, that's what happens to us. The, the, um, the, the saints in Jerusalem, Haggai people, they came from under the blessings of God. They were disobedient. They did not put God first. And that's what happened. When you and I fail to put God first, we remove ourselves from under the hedge. We tell God, okay, it's you. That's what you said. I'm doing my own thing. You said to take care of your house, but I got, I got me a five bedroom, six. I got me some, I got to build, I got, I got to look out for myself. And God said, is that so? You just took yourself out under my protection. And that's what sense, and that's what, that's the history of what has happened. And brothers and sisters, you hear me clearly. We cannot repeat that history. You know, there's only one time in the Bible God says to prove me. Anybody knows where? One time in the Bible God says to prove me. God said to prove me. Can you go to verse, uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse 10? And, and, and we'll end here. One place God said to prove me. In other words, God said, the word try. The Bible says don't try God. But once God said to try me. Try me. He said, 3.10. I'm sorry, Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. I mean, God said this is right here. He said, bring you all the tithes. That is 10% of your income, whether it's gross or net. You know, some, you know most Christians, we just give an offering. <laughs> most of us, praise the Lord. Amen. We give, but it's, just, it's, it's still an offering. 8%, it, it not 10%. Not amen. <laughs> some of you are looking at me. Anyhow. Tithe, where? Into the store, the storehouses were buildings next to the tabernacle. So it would bring uh, the, the, it was an agricultural society. So it would bring their grain and everything, store it next to the, to the house, to the tabernacle. And he said, this is why you bring it in the storehouses. That there may be meat in my house. So what the priests would do, they would go in the storehouses and take the sheep and everything they bring to take it to the house of God. Are you with me? So, uh, and he said, and then God said what? The only time God says to prove him in the Bible, you cannot find it anywhere else. God said, I'm giving you that assurance. God said, I am giving you what? So, when you and I refuse to do it, what are we saying? God, your assurance is not good enough. 
Yeah, you cannot back up what you said. You're telling me, amen, my bills are 5,000. I got 3,000. You're telling me take 300 and give. And then you'll take the balance and let it stretch to 5,000. That's what you're telling me? That's what you're telling me, God. Uh-uh, no way. Not today. I'm going to struggle to pay the 2,000 on my own. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to give you five dollars <laughs> you see these are things I, you see what I'm telling you I have done the analysis at my house in my mind yeah because I was just tired of failing so I'm telling you I have done the analysis that's why I can tell you and I, and I made up my mind one day I'm tired of failing I'm just tired of begging I'm going to trust God and I walk around. When I give it, I used to cry and walk around and say, you said this. That light bill is coming in four days. You said this. God always shows up. Always shows up. So, and notice what God said. Notice what God said. He said, uh -huh, yeah, he said, he said what? Uh, and prove me and see if I won't what? Open the windows of heavens and pour you out a blessing. What he said? That there might not be room enough to receive it. Now listen, listen. When you give it to God, believe you're going to receive it. Yeah, when you give it to God, don't just walk away mad. You walk away mad, you have not believed to receive the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's how this works. If you give it away mad and walk away thinking God is a thief and God taking advantage of you, nothing is going to happen. But if you say, God, I believe your word. Psalms 27 verse 13 says, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness. You see, that is why it's good to memorize scripture. You can bring God's word back from your heart to him and he will honor it. You said I got to believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Lord, I believe in the goodness of my bills being met. That's your word. And your word is good. Notice what he said. He said, not only that, he said, pour you out a blessing and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Can you go to verse 11? That's the verse I want to get to. Verse 11 says, uh-huh. Praise the Lord. It's a good verse, you all. That's why it's taking time. He said, and God said, I will rebuke. Who, who, God, who said? He, I'm not sending Gabriel. I'm not sending Michael. I am coming myself. <laughs> oh, I'm going to rebuke the devil. Who's the devourer? The devil. Yeah, he said, me, I'm coming. I'm not sending no angel. Me, myself. Oh man, what an assurance. Would you agree that's an assurance? What an assurance. For God to say, I myself am coming. And I got a big stick. <laughs> man, you know, I, I listen to a lot of Ministers speak on this right here. And they water down this so much. Say it's under the law. And they forget the law. They forgot the law of first mentioned. A uh, law of first mentioned where you look at a particular text in reference to the way it was first used. The very first time tithe was mentioned was when Abraham, before the law, gave Melchizedek a tenth. That's the very first time. And so that is the context it was used in. First, the law first mentioned it was not under the law, and so and and so. Wh wh why would you? Why would you try to disinherit us like that? Why would you tell us otherwise? You see, wh why would you do that? Is it because preacher, you are not a giver yourself? Think you think about that. Telling me not to do that is disinheriting me. Telling me not to do that is taking me from under the blessing of God. Taking me from under the hedge. Why wouldn't we preachers tell people the truth? Why there seems to be a pressure on preachers not to tell the truth about money? Why is it? Many of you should be happy because this is my last sermon on financial prosperity. <laughs> we are moving to Acts next week. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. When I move to Acts, the church will get back filled. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. But I have a responsibility to tell you the truth because I know I have to stand before God. Elder, when I stand before God, I'm looking for five words. Well done, thou good and faithful. Six. Well done. I I'll take two. Well done. Don't call me faithful. Well done. On my knees. That's what I'm after. Well done, son. I, I get the impression I'm not the only one here who's looking for well done. Amen. Anybody that's looking for well done? Yes, well done. Well done. Well done. We got to expose the devil and his tricks. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to end with that story. In 2021, USA, um, USA Magazine voted Chick-fil-A. Is it Chick-fil-A or Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A as the number one fast food restaurant. Number one. The owner of Chick-fil-A is from the south. I forget, forgot which little city I was reading about it. He said when he started Chick-fil-A, he had two scripture verses he wanted to honor. Hebrews 10, 25. Forsake not the gathering of yourself. That's why there is no business on Sunday. And then he said, the next one I want you to honor was Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring all the tithe. So they give 10% of everything that comes into Chick-fil-A out. And the world is wondering why Chick-fil-A closed on a Sunday is still the number one. God has honored. God, it's not by chance those things happen. And you know, some of us, we sit there and we listen and we say, okay, well, God is good. And we go home and repeat the same mistake I just spoke about today. I say, more power to you. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Think about it. Chick-fil-A. Closed. McDonald's. Uh, uh, um, 24 hours. Kentucky Fries. 24 hours. Popeyes. 26 hours. I'm just joking. <laughs> but, 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 but saints, God told me to share this with you because he wants to start blessing us. He said, when you're done with this sermon, I'm going to bless my people again. And so, Father, I'm done with this sermon. God is going to bless us again so we can do the right thing because we know the truth. Since God has given us numerous assurances, train, train your heart to believe God. Amen. It's, it's, I said train your heart. It's going to take, amen, a study, understanding the nature of God. And, but you can just believe God and say, I read your word and pastor said it. I'm telling you, on the authority of God's word, he won't fail you. Let me tell you, I'm telling you here, brothers and sisters, in the house of God, on the authority of God's word, he will not fail you. God said, you'll never be ashamed. Uh, I think he's, I uh, heard Joel, get me Joel chapter 28 and 29. Let's, two more verses, and I'll show you in these verses twice, God said, you'll never be ashamed. You have Joel chapter 2, verse 27, 28, 28, 29. Joel chapter 2. Praise God. I'm done. Joel chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 28. Amen. Oh, I think go to verse 27. The two last verses. Yeah, there us go. There we go. 27. It says here, and you shall know that I am the, in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall what? He said that twice. He said you will never be ashamed if you honor me. Because my words never return void. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. If you're looking today, hallelujah, you tune in a good time. Oh, we thank you. God hath given us so many assurances. God's word never returns void. He's a good father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We have all these examples in the world of companies who are prospering because they choose to obey God. What about us, God's people?
Please take time to meditate on the Word and let it sink into your heart and soul and mind today. Knowing that the Christian who meditates on the Word will be like a tree planted by the water, bringing forth fruit in its season and prospering in all that he does. But what if you aren't a Christian today? What if you don't know if you're bound for heaven as a forgiven child of God? If that's you, then let's take care of it right now if you're ready. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Are you ready to be forgiven of your sins and washed clean and made new? Are you ready to begin your new life in Christ? Then turn to God right now and say, Lord, I love you. I need you. I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me and wash me clean. I receive your forgiveness right now as I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. God, please lead me and teach me and show me how to live from now on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you're looking for a good church family, you'll be welcomed with open arms at Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee, located at 4750 Capital Circle Southeast near Tram Road. Sunday school begins for all ages at 10 a.m. and the morning service begins at 11. And the Wednesday evening service begins at 7. This is a life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational church where people of all races, backgrounds, and walks of life come together to worship, to be inspired in their love for God, to develop relationships, and to be empowered to live out God's purpose for their lives. Find more information on their website, imitatorsofgodministries.com, or call the church, 850-408-8496.